Hello everyone, welcome to the Highline Guitars YouTube guitar building channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. And of course, to everyone who's watching, if you enjoy these videos and would like to show some support without having to spend a lot of money, consider clicking that thumbs up button. That always helps a lot. And if you really get a lot from my videos and would like to show some support via financial assistance, you can visit my eGuitar Plans website. There's a link in the description below. Or you can visit my Highline Guitars merch store, which is displayed below the description for this video. There you can purchase all different sorts of items and know that whatever you purchase is helping to support this channel so that I can keep making these videos and you're getting something in return. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today is part two of my electric violin project. And what I am hoping to do is to cover the basics of how I go from the design process through to uh, writing the G code that I will need to carve out the different parts of the instrument on my CNC machine. Now I'm not going to get into excruciating detail here. I'm just going to kind of give an overview. Basically I'm using uh, a CAD CAM process. And for CAD, I'm using Rhinoceros 7. And for CAM, I'm using MeshCAM, two separate programs that work together to create the G code files that I'm going to use, uh, like I said, to carve the different parts the body, the neck, and the fingerboard on my CNC machine. So let's jump over on the computer and I'll kind of walk you through that process. This is the concept mock-up that I showed in last week's episode. And one change that I've made, if you look closely here, I have dummied in a pair of, these are P-Base pickups, uh, the bobbins. So what my thought is, is I'm going to take uh, a couple of these bobbins, I've already got them wound, and I will wire them together in series so that they will essentially be a humbucker, noise free. And my thought then is to probably connect these directly to an output jack, which I will mount on the surface just temporarily back here on the bout. And I'm either going to do it on the top or the back. I haven't decided yet which side I'll mount that on. And, and I'll probably use some type of a mounting system. Uh, they're actually commercially available for installing a jack on the outside of a violin. So I'll probably do that back here. That way I don't have to drill holes and install the jack into the body. I'd consider doing that, but the problem is when you install a jack into this violin body, in order to service the jack correctly, I would have to have a opening on the back, sort of like a control cavity cover, so that I could get access to the jack from the inside in case there were ever any issues or if I needed to replace the jack. So that, I don't think that really will work unless I decided to add volume and tone controls to the violin. I really don't want to do that because as it stands right now, this violin could have quite a bit of weight to it, more so than you know you would normally expect in a violin. So what my thought is, is that I would just have the jack you know, mounted to the outside of the body. The pickups would be wired to the jack, and then I would plug a cable into the jack, and that cable, for now at least, it would go straight into the amplifier. But what I could do is I could make a external preamp and this would include not only volume control but a uh, pot for bass mid-range and treble control so I could really fine-tune the signal and get the tone that I want and it would be amplified but that unfortunately at this stage is a little bit more than I want to bite off so I think I'm just gonna hold that as an idea for the future and we'll see how complicated something like that is going to be but as far as the CNC files what I have is for the neck 
uh, as you can see the neck is it's a fairly small neck you know it's much much smaller than your typical guitar neck so what I've done is I've come up with a way that I'm going to split the neck along the center line and I will carve each half just like you see here and then what I'll do is once the neck the two halves have been carved these will be held into the blank uh, with tabs so once I finished carving it on the CNC machine I can cut the tabs liberate the two halves and then glue them together to form the finished neck so it'll be sort of like a two-piece laminated neck um, and I'm also thinking about some other possibilities about drilling holes into the neck itself in order to decrease the weight. Uh, I haven't fully decided that yet, but I think that may be something I'll do. A lot of this stuff is going to happen on the fly because I'm treating this whole project like it was a prototype. This isn't going to be sold to anybody. It's just going to be for myself but I have to treat it sort of as a prototype because I've never actually built one of these before and I'm thinking that by the time I get finished with it I'll have learned a lot and can apply it to the next one if I decide to build another one so for the body what I have done is set up the files the way you see here it again it's going to be in two pieces a top half and a bottom half and this long rectangle represents the blank that I'm going to carve from. And the very first operation that I'll do on the CNC machine is I'll carve out the inside of the two halves. So up here at the front, well, I should say the back based on the orientation, this is going to be the bottom cavity. And up here, this small section up here is where the neck cavity or the neck uh, pocket will be positioned. So I'll carve those out first out of that blank and then I'm going to carve the top half here and this one actually the bottom of it uh, mirrors the contour on the other side and that allows me to get the top uh, about a quarter of an inch thick. I, I don't think I want the uh, top to be any thinner than that pretty pretty straightforward and simple but then once that's done I can then remove the clamps and then flip the blank over so that it's upside down then I will carve the other side now you don't see the blank here because when I flip it over I'm going to be carving the outside contour as well as the perimeter shape so I don't need to show the blank but I do need to show the sides of the violin both halves and here you can see how that's going to look when it's set up and the first carving operation will be to carve the contour of both the the top as well as the backside and that's just just to get this carve shape because that's it's a carved shape um, typical of, of a violin so I'll cut that out first then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the F holes, which you don't see here because the F holes are going to be a two dimensional carving operation. And I can set that up in Easel Pro, which is the software that I use to um, control the CNC machine. So I'll just use a simple 2D carve and I'll carve those F holes out after I've carved the contour. Then I'll switch bits and I will cut the perimeter shape and of course there will be tabs that hold these uh, halves into the blanks so that they don't go flying around once the bit has cut all the way through. And Once that's done I can remove the whole blank from the CNC machine and I can cut those tabs, liberate these two halves and then glue them together. So that's kind of how the CNC process is going to work. Now I've created these 3D models and from these 3D models I have saved out STL files and then those STL files are imported into MeshCam which is where I set up all my tool paths. This is what 
the STL file that I saved out of Rhinoceros looks like when I import it into MeshCam. So you, you think of it this way, Rhino is used to make the 3D models and then MeshCam is used to write the G-code files. So this is how it looks like when it's brought into MeshCam. And it, it basically looks the same. You're, you're looking at the representation of the 3D model with a few differences that I'll explain here. Um, first of all, we have this rectangular box, if you look closely. It's kind of a gray line and a red line. And what that represents is the blank. So that's set up in MeshCam by simply um, editing the stock size. And that determines the dimensions of that blank. And I can position my STL files in that blank so that it is in the exact same spot opposite of the internal carved cavities that will be done. So, you know, once those, car those cavities have been carved, the blank is flipped over and then I can start this process of cutting out the body. So what the tool paths look like, I set these up in mesh cam. You know, I have the option to do roughing, unified, cutout, parallel, waterline, pencil finishing, and drilling. And I'm keeping it fairly simple. And what I'll be doing in the first carving operation for this side is a rough carve. And what that does is it hogs away most of the wood that needs to be removed from the top of the blank to get down to that contoured surface on both the front and back halves. Then once that's done, I will switch to the first of two finishing operations and the first one is going to run back and forth along the y-axis and those green lines indicate the direction that the tool bit is going to be running as it cuts that surface and it's a very fine cut there's a very uh, small step over and that's to give the surface as smooth a surface as possible but once I've done that uh, y-axis uh, parallel finish, I will then do an x-axis, which is exactly the same cut, just going across the width of the body on the x-axis. And doing those two cars is going to give it a very, very smooth surface finish that I can probably sand smooth, starting with maybe a 150 grit sandpaper, followed by a 220 and then a 320. So that's, that's basically, in a nutshell, how I use MeshCam to set up the tool paths. So, you know, Rhino for the 3D models, MeshCam for the G-code files. And what I'll do is I'll save all these G-code files into a folder, which I will then copy onto my laptop. And the laptop is then uh, connected to my CNC machine. And that's it's from there that I send those G-code files to the CNC machine to do these different carving operations. Now, you're probably wondering about the side of these blanks. You're not seeing any green down there, so one might wonder, how is that going to be cut out? Well, I've actually set up a separate file that includes just the perimeter cut. And the bit will make probably, I think it's four passes all the way around, each pass going a little bit deeper until it cuts all the way through. And of course, it skips over where these red bars are because those are the tabs and that keeps the blank or keeps the, the body halves connected to the blank so they don't go flying around. But then once that's done, then I can remove the blank, cut the tabs, liberate the two halves and glue them together. Well, that's all the time I've got for this episode. In part three, I've got some decisions to make because like I said at the beginning, I'm planning to use some precision based pickups wired together in series to form a humbucker that I can use on this violin. And I don't know if that's gonna work or not. We'll set it up, we'll see what happens, and together we can kind of experience the uh, potential for success or failure with this. And at the very least, we'll learn something from it. And if it doesn't work, the way that I plan to uh, install these pickups, I can simply remove them and then shift gears and, and use a piezo instead. So uh, it's not like it's going to be a total disaster if this doesn't work at all. But 
you know, together we're going to figure this out and see, see what happens. That's one of the reasons why I like to build my own instruments and why I don't like to make exact copies of other folks' existing instruments because there's really no challenge to building a guitar which has already been designed by somebody else and all the issues have been solved. I think it's more exciting to head down that path that um, you have never been down before and encounter issues and solve problems along the way. It's, it it kind of keeps the whole uh, process of building electric instruments exciting. So we'll see what happens. At any rate, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I would encourage you to uh, post your thoughts and comments down below. Tell me what you think of this whole idea. And, you know, we'll see how it, it uh, plays out as this project continues. So until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for part three.